So the first question is, um, who are you? Just like an introduction of yourself. Hi, my name is Jamie Moses. I'm the MLA for St. Vital. I am the uh, critic for economic development and training or uh, economy of the jobs, as well as critic for advanced education and skills, and also spokesperson for affordability. Well, that's, that's a good. So it's good to hear that. And my, my next question is, when or where did you start your political career? Well, I was first elected in 2019 uh, during the uh, fall election in September. Uh, so I've been an MLA for about a year and a half now and uh, started uh, myself volunteering uh, with the party and uh, ran uh, in 2016 unsuccessfully, but then ran for the second time in 2019 and won. Oh, wow, that's, that's good. That even though the 2016 one wasn't successful, you didn't give up and that is the push on to to uh, try again 2019, which happened to be a very historic um, election, per se. And so my, my question, my next question for you is, what keeps you going despite the challenges? So for example, 2016, you, you tried it out and it didn't, it didn't work so well, and you still keep on the energy and getting involved and you run again 2019, which you won, which was like an obstacle on the own that you overcome. And also for being um, an elected um, person into the par into the Manitoba Parliament, what and there may be some challenges that comes with that also. So what keeps you going despite all the different challenges? Well, uh, thanks for the question, and really, you know, thank you so much for even having this platform available for people. It's uh, it's great that you're, uh, you know, you yourself are putting uh, this together for folks to see and, and expose them. Um, and uh, for me, you know, having that perseverance, uh, you know, to go through a loss in 2016, uh, you know, one of the things that I was very happy with in, in, in during that experience was to be able to connect with so many community members in my neighborhood. You know, I had been a volunteer in my neighborhood through community centers and through resource centers and um, seeing the impact that the provincial government has on those uh, organizations was my first motivation for getting involved. Um, that kind of uh, having those connections and seeing the impact that it has helped motivate me to uh, run in the first place in 2016. Um, and that was still my motivation for continuing to work uh, through 2019. I was fortunate enough to be successful. And now it uh, continues to be my motivation to uh, work every day for my community. You know, I have a family, a wife and two little kids. I look at their life. I look at their um, opportunities that they have when they're a little older. I look at the schools that they're in right now. I want to make sure that those things are not only good for my kids, but good for kids right across my neighborhood. And that opportunities are going to be there for people um, at, at all ages. And that's my motivation and my inspiration for continuing to work hard every day. Wow, thank you so much for sharing. That's that's really good. And 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 looking looking into um, the 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 current flow of things, there there are a lot of changes that that happened. Especially in the twenty nineteen transition into twenty twenty, there are a lot of things that we didn't see that happened. Especially with the effect of COVID nineteen. So what? How how are you able to manage the transition? Because now you transition from being a private citizen in court to um, the public life and now in the public life um it, there's the pandemic which we have no um we have no no code to to follow right so how how do you, how do you manage the transition or how did it how is it going for you i think like for all the manitobans and anyone pretty much everyone around the world they've seen all the changes and they know um how challenging some of that can, has been over the last year. And, uh, you know, for me, it's still about finding ways to help connect with people who are maybe struggling even more so through this time of COVID. I think, you know, in addition to all the health challenges that people have faced with COVID-19, all the other challenges that have become brought to light over the past year, Things like racial inequality has been highlighted, uh, income inequality, uh, a homelessness crisis, um, you know, problems in education. 
And all these things have been highlighted as a result of this COVID-19 pandemic. And so when we look around and see all these challenges and see all these issues around us, it's like, how do, how do I, as an elected official, how do all of us take our own steps into making, uh, making them a little bit better? You know, so I've reached out to community groups and have to try to have open and honest conversations about race and equality and race relations. You know, we've advocated for, you know, good services in schools and for better health care services, because these are the real things that affect people. And so by working and focusing on solving each of those problems one step at a time is kind of what helps uh, helps me get through uh, this uh, most challenging year. Wow. Wow. That's, thanks so much for sharing that that looking into the, the doing the little the, any part that you can do into solving the problems that are existing or what is what is going on that helps even to manage the the changes that are going on so thanks so much for sharing that so now you, you made mention of um the west relation and also the homelessness um crisis which um is which is very real um so my question is what what um, what is your thing? like this month now is Black History Month. So what does that mean to you um, as as a person? Oh, that's a great question. You know, Black History Month is, I guess, I suppose it means uh, something different to everyone. But for me, it means uh, a few things. Uh, first, it means you know being able to honor those who have really been true inspirations to the Black community, the people who have been. Uh, so absolutely noteworthy, um, you know, the uh, Bell Davis is the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. is uh, Rosa Parks, these people who have been um, monumental icons, it's about honoring those, their achievements. But it's also about um, bringing to light and, and sometimes telling the stories of maybe unknown or less commonly known um, black accomplishments accomplishments done by black people because oftentimes we find that the history that is uh, conventionally told doesn't always fully explain or share those stories mm -hmm. so black history month is a good time to highlight some of those stories for everyone to learn regardless of what um what color you are and and uh in addition to that for me the most important thing about black history is to use those stories uh, that inspiration to help people see that what they're doing today is part of our history, is part of our black history, that uh, we see them, we see their actions, that their actions have value, that they have value, and that their accomplishments have value. And every accomplishment that they have is becoming, is becoming the new black history. And so uh, using that history as inspiration for us to um, make ourselves and our communities better wow. in the future. Wow, that's, that's so, so, so good. And thanks for sharing that. that you're taking it's in the time to um, remember the, the, the work of people who, who were before us, who work hard. Maybe they're not able to get to achieve the position that um, we get to achieve today, um, the, the limelight and also um, some of the media focus that we have today, they, some of them they don't have, they, they didn't have that. So bringing using this time to celebrate what they've done is also remarkable. And I'm talking about people that that make remarkable changes because you are you are one of them. You won an historic election because um, prior to the 2019 election, we learned that for the 148 of uh, 150 150 now year history of Manitoba uh, legislation, legislature, there was no black um, person, right? And you happen to be one of the first people to be elected into the parliament at that time. So other other that few um, being part of the history? Well, you know, I think that um, the accomplishment that we have achieved by uh, becoming MLAs is a reflection of, of the communities that we're in. 
but also the fact that we stand on the shoulders of people who have made uh, many accomplishments in our communities before us. You know, talking about Councillor Chambers, who's uh, elected as first uh, Black City Councillor. Even prior to Marcus Chambers was Inez Stevenson, who was the first uh, Black person elected in Manitoba as school trustee back in the 1970s. And, uh, you know, I've actually spoken with her, with her sons here in our province. Who are, and um, all their work that they have done have paved the way for us. And, you know, for me, uh, being in this position is an accomplishment, but a greater accomplishment is that I'm able to open the door for others. Right. And being able to open that door for more people to uh, see themselves in this type of a role, envision themselves in perhaps a different high-level role in whatever field they're interested in, would be a greater accomplishment than what we've already achieved so that we can spread um, equality uh, across our province in all areas. Wow. That's that's a good. Thank you so much for sharing that and bringing light into um, the life. I, I I happened to speak with um, Chambers, uh, Mr. Chambers, a couple of weeks ago, and I learned about the things that he has done personally, even as a city councilor, the first elected city councilor, and for the current project that he's working to bring light into some of the um, black innovators, black. Um, Creators, you know, inventors, right? And it's it's quite inspiring to learn the the things that he's doing, and you now amplifying his voice. That's also very good to see that um, you're not just doing your own thing; you're also celebrating the life of um, somebody that can be be um, before you, even though um, your position is in the provincial level. You still recognize that it's one of the people is because of. Some of the things that they have done that pay for 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 you so that's that's very inspiring to them and thank you so much for sharing that and my question is if um if you have the next goal or ambition and you're able to share what would that be oh great question um you know right now uh being an mla for san Vital, my goal is to serve all the people in my community um one of the ways and I'm trying to do that is a bill that I've introduced in the legislature, Bill 212, and that is an anti-racism and human rights training for provincial employees. Mm -hmm. And so it would make uh, anti-racism training mandatory for all provincial employees so that they can uh, get that understanding about not only how to not be racist, but how to promote anti-racism uh, to make the lives and the work that they do <clears throat> better for all Manitobans. So that's a bill that I'm currently working on. That would be something that I'm trying to pass and work towards. But also, in terms of, uh, you know, you're talking about things that I could inspire to do in the future. You know, for me, um, that isn't just looked at as, uh, you know, a career or what my next step might be, but really about um, how do I work to solve some problems that we're facing? Mm -hmm. You know, working towards solving problems like income inequality, uh, you know, inequality that people face uh, accessing healthcare services, um, ensuring that education has um, uh, improving our educational outcomes. And you can do that by, you know, reducing poverty and reducing homelessness and uh, ensuring those services for mental health. And all these are things that I would like to accomplish as I move forward in my career. Uh, more so than any other, you know, kind of position yeah. uh, that uh, one might seek in politics. Well, that's that's quite that's quite awesome because um, normally this when 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 question like this is asked, the 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 usual responses are, oh, maybe I'm going to the federal level and doing this and doing that and <laughs> doing that, right? And for you, it's not just about the position holding a higher position. It's about making the impact, making the little changes in in the society to make life better for the for the citizens and every member of the community. Right? So that is that's very, very um great to see that um that that you're not just you know following the normal way right to say, oh I'm gonna have to I've achieved now as the first um black MLA, maybe the next one be like the first black MP. No, but also doing diligent work to um, pass the bills to make sure that everybody um, everybody working in the in the province learn about ways to not just be um, um, not just know that 
you cannot be racist, but also promoting um, workplace culture and environment that will be able to allow everybody to share their views. So thanks so much for for the bill. I'm looking forward to it, and I think it will be it will be a great um, a great thing to to see that come to come to pass um, shortly. Um, so my final question would be. If you have a comment or um, any last word for any any anyone out there within the community, maybe um, they're looking into getting involved in the in politics, or um, they're just there at home and looking for some other something to motivate or inspire them. What will you um, say to anyone? Uh, well, I'll say to anyone this: that if you think something's impossible. It's not, and I'm living proof of that. Uh, it's never been done before for a black individual to be elected, and now we have three of them. So if you think that uh, whatever your goal might be, that it hasn't been done, or someone like me hasn't done it before, uh, you, you put that aside and think that you know through your hard work, through connecting with other people in your community and working together as a team, and uh, you know your goals can be accomplished, and that doesn't mean just politics. It can mean whether it's uh, in business, in finance, uh, in healthcare, and education. Uh, if it isn't politics, feel free to contact me and you know get in touch with me. I'll be able to love to chat with lots of po folks who are interested in that. Yeah. But if it's another field, make sure that you set out. Uh, I would say that you set out that goal in your that your plan, your 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 vision for what you want to accomplish have a plan that can meet that goal, work towards it, but also acknowledge that you sometimes can't do it by yourself. You need people around you to help you out. Yeah. So don't be afraid to ask for that help. Uh, stick with what you want to do and uh, work as hard as you can to achieve your goals. Wow. Thank you so thank you so much for sharing those. And I really appreciate you taking time even to be with me today. Um, this is the um, the ending part of the interview. So let me 